Hi, uh, my name's Steve. Uh, I'm doing the regular project and the data series I've chosen is the monthly average cost of a night's accommodation at a hotel, motel or guest house in Victoria and data sets from uh, January 1980 to June of 1995. So we'll have a quick look at the data set to start off with. Um, <clears throat> so on the uh, on the left hand side we've got the in black it's the um uh, the average cost of, of accommodation in victoria and we've also got a in red we've got a predictor series which is uh, just the australian cpi and we obviously would expect that to be a high, highly correlated with the, the average cost of of accommodation um, now, just looking at the, the series to start off with, we can see that there's a clear upwards trend, um, possible seasonality, although it, it's not it's not that obvious. Um, and it looks like there is a, um, a changing variance at the start here for the first five years. The, the variance is, uh, is much smaller than it is later on here. The variance has increased um so there's definitely some some changing variants um so straight away with that we we can think of um possibly looking at a, a non-linear state space model um and on the right hand side here we've got uh just labeled the the average cost time series uh with the with the months it's a bit difficult to see on on this image, but uh, but zoomed in, um, there's no clear pattern of seasonality there. And uh, I've also just I've also worked out the the correlation between the cost and the CPI is uh, is point uh, nine nine, um, very high, which is which is what we'd expect a very high positive correlation there. Um, and so we've got the sample ACF and PACF. They uh, they both confirmed uh, confirmed the the existence of a trend. We've got the decreasing um, pattern here in the ACF and the the high initial lag in the uh, PACF, which which is consistent with a, a trend in the series. Uh, I have also looked at the seasonally adjusted data with the X12 uh, decomposition, and it, it looks like here we've got the um, seasonally adjusted data in blue. For the most part, it actually looks like it follows the trend quite closely. Um, so there may be some elements of uh, seasonality in in the series, and and just looking here at the seasonal factors. Um, it does it does tend to jump around a little bit um, by months we've got some months here with a with a, a higher mean than the others in uh, in February and November and then other months have, have got a slightly lower lower mean like January and, and December um, but it is a little bit all over the place so um, possibly some some seasonality there. Um, now I might just jump over to R Studio for a second. Um, so I have uh, initially tried uh, modeling some um, distributed lag models to start off with. Um, they didn't really give the, the best MASE values. And so for the purposes of this presentation, I have uh, I've just skipped over those and started with a uh, with the dynamic uh, linear models. Um, so I'll just go back to that. And because there is that uh, the changing variance apparent in the series, um, I've applied a, a box Cox transformation to, to try and reduce that um, the change in variance. Uh, lambda value uh, calculated was negative 0.35, and that has that does sort of uh, reduce the, the variance a little bit in the series. Um, I've then modelled uh, five different um, 
five different models and uh, the best one um, you can see here is model five with an MASE of 0.479. Uh, that model included the first three legs of the original series plus uh, a seasonal component. It didn't actually include a, the, the trend component, which, which was interesting. Um, just so these were the these were the five models. It started out with um, uh, trend and seasonality, and, and eventually this this was the best fitting model. Um, so I'll just have a look at the residuals on that one. Um, we can see that for the most part, um, the residuals do follow the uh, norm normally distributed uh, pattern here, uh, but there are quite a few significant um, significant lags in, in the residuals. So hopefully with a, um, uh, the state-based models, uh, in particular the non-linear uh, models, we'd, we'd uh, hope for that to be to be slightly improved. So we'll move on to those now. So first of all, e even though we would predict the uh, non-linear uh, models to be the best fitting due to that, the changing variance, um, I have looked at, first of all, Holt, Winter, uh, Holt Winters models, because there is the um, trend and, and possible seasonality. Um, best MASC value found there was 0.226. Um, I've then looked at the linear state-based models and, and the best MASE value found there was 0.24. Um, and as we expect, a lot, not one of the non-linear uh, models was uh, did give us the best MASE value, which was 0.209. Um, that model was um, MAM, the Multiplicative Error, Additive Trend and Multiplicative seasonality um, so that was the best the best model I found so and this is the the residuals for that model um, so just comparing that to the previous one you can see it it, it does fit that normally distributed pattern slightly uh, slightly better than the previous one and um, there are also less less significant um, lags in, in the residuals there, um, which is which is good. Um, so I'm happy with this to go ahead with, with this model for our for our forecasting. And here is the, the forecast. Um, as we can see um, we we're forecasting the trend the upwards trend to continue. Um, uh, with that sort of uh, continuing variance, um, I've got the the ninety five percent confidence intervals here, the or the the two confidence intervals, and and as we expect, um, they are increasing as as time goes on. Um, but but this looks like a fairly good uh, forecast for for the series. Um, and that's about it for the for the forecast, um, for the presentation. Sorry. Um, in the report, I will look at um, the the correlation between the the CPI Australian CPI and the the average monthly uh, cost of uh, accommodation, uh, just to make sure that that's, the correlation isn't spurious. Uh, we wouldn't expect it to be because it would make sense that they are highly correlated, but I will I will uh, check that in the report, and I might also um, look at the uh, model selection uh, techniques from from module nine as well. Um, so thanks very much for your time.